Musk's vision for sending the first humans to Mars by the year 2050 has proven to be divisive, to say the least. Many call him a madman, while others retain full confidence in the SpaceX founder's ability to deliver. One of the main factors that will make or break Musk's promise is the development of the Starship, the vessel proposed to take on the new frontier. With two test flights so far, at the time of this video's release, it's still difficult to see whether SpaceX can stick to their leader's ambitious timeline. Having covered the latest updates from the Starship's test flights and launches, we've decided to switch attention to the other crucial aspect of the Mars vision, life inside the ship. Today's video analyzes how the ship and crew might be optimized for the maiden voyage, as well as the factors that could influence its success or failure. It has been 63 years since Yuri Gagarin set off for the heavens aboard Vostok 1 in 1961. Since then, there have been 381 human spaceflights carried out by three countries, Russia, China, and the United States. The flight programs have varied over the years, with America's space shuttle and Russia's Soyuz being the most prolific. The former undertook 135 missions between 1981 and 2011, chiefly for the building of the International Space Station. Russia's Soyuz has 85 flights from 1992 to date. China's Shenzhou program, launched in 2003, has undertaken 12 missions to date. Gagarin's voyage of orbiting around the Earth ranks as one of the most important human space flights along with the Apollo program, which sent humans to the moon for the first time. The Apollo 13 crew also holds the record for the furthest distance traveled from Earth, having gone 471 kilometers from home to the far side of the moon. Founded in 2002, American company SpaceX's forays into human spaceflight began in 2020 with the Crew Dragon craft, which has made 12 flights so far. Most flights have been to the International Space Station, located at an orbit height of around 408 kilometers. However, the furthest manned SpaceX flight was the 585 kilometer orbit height of the Inspiration mission undertaken by the Crew Dragon Inspiration. Now, most crewed vessels have been oriented towards functionality, with bare essentials like nutrition and water. Enough for the relatively short voyages we've made so far. The Apollo missions, including stays on the moon, took an average of just over eight days round trip. But Mars is a different story. At its closest, the red planet is 54 million kilometers away and four one million kilometers at its furthest. That gives us an average distance of 225 million kilometers between the two planets. This means a spacecraft cruising at 39,000 kilometers h would take between six and seven months to reach Mars at its furthest. Such distance and time bring factors beyond basic sustenance into play. Ergonomics, physical fitness, mental health, socialization, as well as greater demand for food, water, and fuel are just a few of the problems the Starship and its crew are meant to tackle. What will life be like aboard the Starship? So just how will the Starship get to Mars? Well, the general idea is to use liquid methane and liquid oxygen propellant for both launch and cruising through deep space. This propellant was chosen for two reasons. Firstly, it has a lesser negative impact on the Earth's environment compared to traditional rocket fuels like kerosene. If we are to launch hundreds or even thousands of flights to Mars in the future, we'll need to do so sustainably without pouring untold tons of poison into the atmosphere. Don't forget about the potential pollution of return flights as they land. Secondly, and perhaps more importantly, is the fact that methane and oxygen are readily available on Mars. Harvesting them on Mars will eliminate the need to bring extra return trip fuel from Earth. Naturally, extra fuel would mean a heavier ship, which demands more fuel. Of course, fueling is a key part of successfully reaching a world 400 million kilometers away. However, SpaceX also needs to find a way to ensure that the people on board get there healthy and sane. In terms of sheer livability and comfort, NASA's space shuttle is the best vessel to ever complete a mission. The shuttle's front compartment was divided into two floors, the top floor for flight and cargo bay controls, and a lower level for crew cabins and toilet facilities. This layout was functional enough for a week or two of working on the ISS, but flying to Mars is another kettle of fish. 
For a Mars mission, Starship will have to be large enough and loaded enough to serve as a self-sufficient interplanetary RV that caters to multiple needs. At present, the projected Starship without the launching first stage vehicle, also known as a booster, is about 50 meters high with a diameter of 9 meters. The top is conical, which reduces the internal volume somewhat. It has a propellant capacity of 1,200 tons and a cargo capacity of roughly 100 tons. Of that 50 meter height, 33 meters will be used up by the ship's engines, methane tanks, and an oxygen tank. That means crew and cargo will have to fit within the remaining 17 meters. However, the insulating dome that separates the crew and payload section from the propellant section may eat up a bit more space. That 17 meters will most likely be split into more sections, each with a specific function. The lowest level could be used to house life support facilities, like power generators, air supply units, and solar batteries that sustain the whole ship and crew. Cargo could also be stored here if space allows. Heavy cargo, including mission-specific equipment like drones, cameras, rovers, sample collection kits, building modules, and more may be stored here. Crew would also stow heavy personal gear here too. This first level will also be the ground floor for the interlevel elevator, which will run along a shaft in the middle of the ship. Most of the mechanisms and power units that power the elevator will be on the lower level as well. It's important to make the first level the heaviest part of the crew and cargo section because a lower center of gravity will make landing the ship easier. Remember the starship must land pointing upwards. Headroom for the first level is not too important because crew members will spend most of their time on the upper levels. However, it must be comfortable enough to allow the crew room to move cargo and carry out maintenance procedures. The second level will be a crew support center where human necessities like food and water are stored. A shelf garden would also be nifty for growing fresh vegetables and herbs on a small scale. Cutlery and appliances would also be kept here. Hopefully bacon and eggs with toast in space will be plausible by 2050. Ideally, the second level would be a tad lighter than the first level, but still heavier than all the levels above to aid with the center mass issue. Next up, we could have the Starship's Wellness Center, as well as hygiene facilities and lavatories on the third level. The Wellness Center will likely borrow concepts currently in use on the ISS to keep the astronauts in shape during the long journey. Weightlifting tools like the ISS's resistance machine, ideal for squatting and deadlifting, would be essential for maintaining muscle mass and bone density in zero gravity space. Muscles work on a use them or lose them principle, so lack of exercise would accelerate atrophy. Cardiovascular health is also crucial. Machines like a treadmill or stationary bike would help maintain good circulation levels in space. On the hygiene side, SpaceX is still working on prototypes for a space toilet system that will be ready by the time of the maiden voyage. These prototypes have been trialed on Crew Dragon missions, and they seem promising. As far as cleansing one's body, there will likely be no showering on the Starship, at least as we know it on Earth. For starters, water does not flow in space due to the lack of gravity. Additionally, water would be a precious commodity that would be conserved as much as possible. Unless Musk invents some revolutionary space shower alternative, the Mars mission crew will have to rough it like they do on the ISS. ISS crew members wipe their bodies down with wet towels and use dry non-rinse shampoos to scrub away dirt. The fourth level would be ideal for crew cabins. These would be very small spaces or capsules big enough for a single bed and some personal storage space. Another thing that could be added to this level is a sick bay for crew members with medical issues. Placement on this level would allow the crew chief medical officer and other crew members to check on patients around the clock. The fifth level is a good choice for a common area for crew members to hang out and socialize. Dining facilities, entertainment centers, and windows would be some of the potential features. Level six would be the uppermost level accessible for crew use. This would be the flight control center, where the crew manually flies the ship and braces for liftoff and landings. This level would likely be the beginning of the ship's nose, so it will have less internal volume than the other levels. Luckily, most of the activities here can be done while seated. The tip of the starship's nose will serve as a methane header tank and won't be accessible to people. How many people will be on Starship? There are still debates on the best number of people to send on the very first trip to Mars. Elon Musk has boldly expressed that a hundred people will make the maiden voyage, but the math based on the ship's size and carrying capacity doesn't favor him. 
every person will need enough food, water, and space to sustain optimum performance for at least 14 months. That's a lot of resources, even for a 100-ton payload capacity. Too few people could also result in interpersonal friction and the risk of the ship being undermanned if something happens to a few crew members. As such, we think 10 or so people would be a good number to manage the ship's resources and maintain healthy socialization. Ideally, these astronauts would be in peak physical condition, have been through rigorous mental health and fortitude screening, and have specialties in different arenas related to space travel. Experience in engineering, health, and the military are just a few of these specialties. How will the Starship be powered? The Starship will need every drop of liquid oxygen and methane for propulsion, meaning onboard systems will probably need an auxiliary power source for the journey to and from Mars. Solar is a potential solution, but there is a problem. The closer you move to Mars, the further away you move from the Sun, reducing the ability to harness solar energy. Furthermore, attaching giant panels like those on the ISS would make the ship ungainly and would not be practical during landing or relaunching. Also, this wouldn't help much as the ship moves away from the Sun. Preloaded battery packs would also present challenges. For instance, the ship would need a lot of them, which would add significant weight to the ship and eat up precious cargo space. Ultimately, while the idea of reaching Mars is a thrilling one, SpaceX is still very much in the theoretical phase of this goal. Apart from the propulsion issues, practical livability, communications and onboard power are still challenges that are beyond our current technological capabilities. However, 2050 is still a fair way out, and Musk and co. are on a relentless pace to hit their target. Bet against them at your peril. With that, we've come to the end of the video. Thanks again for watching, and we hope you like the video, share it, and subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell icon to keep up to date with all the best space travel news. Bye-bye.